Hey, I'm Matthew P. Munger, and it's time for a Webflow tutorial, how to build breadcrumb navigation in Webflow e-commerce. We will learn how good relationships between products and CMS collections can provide a strong structure to build components. If you're working on an e-commerce site with more than a handful of products, you'll need a way to organize them. The organization method can add product labels and allow site visitors to navigate quickly across product lines. But how can we do this? Well, somewhere in the multiverse, this type of navigable organization got the yummy title of breadcrumbs. Because sometimes, just like our friends Hansel and Gretel, we want to follow the digital trail with delicious stops along the way. Here's a peek at the results. There are three main steps to create breadcrumbs. Defining the relationships, making the connections, designing with data. Let's start by thinking about nested data. You can think of it as folders within folders within folders. This is nesting or dependencies because each level has a parent-child relationship. It is a very traditional model of hierarchy in computing. For the sake of this tutorial, let's use the example of a sweet shop. This little sweet shop has various sections called departments. Inside each department, sweets are divided into types. Using traditional nested relationships would give us a URL structure of suite-shop.com slash department slash type slash product. In Webflow, we design with dynamic data using CMS collections as databases. This means we can define the relationship at every level not just the parent-child level. We have references that are more akin to sibling relationships than parent-child relationships. This allows for lots of options when we decide to connect things later on. It's worth noting that the relationships can go deeper than three levels or hierarchical tiers, but our example is only using three collections. This method can be implemented for any number of collection relationships above two. Just add collections as needed and define the new relationships at each level to each of the others. These connections are called references. Each reference creates a direct one-way relationship between two CMS items, which is perfect for allowing us to bind data wherever we desire it. We have to define relationships for each collection and not only at the product level. This is because each collection is a direct child of the site or sweet shop. Now we define the relationships between the collections. Each product collection item is connected to a single type item and a single department item. And each type collection is connected to a single department item. Let's set up the site pages, the home page or storefront, which is a static page. Then create the department collection, which has a CMS template page. Now create the type collection, which also has a CMS template page. Before we keep going, let's create a reference field and connect it to the department collection. Lastly, create the product collection under e-commerce, which also gives us a template page. We need to add two reference fields for our products and connect them to the department collection and type collection. Here's how our structure looks using Webflow CMS and e-commerce. You might notice a new collection off to the side called product categories. This collection is created automatically when you enable e-commerce inside of Webflow. The Categories collection is an example of a multi-reference field, which is like a two-way street as opposed to the references one-way street. Multiple products can be assigned a category, and multiple categories can be assigned to a product. This kind of multi-reference relationship is great for what I like to think of as quick collections easily grouping products because they're similar or go well together. This happens on the category template pages or using CMS collection lists on the product template pages. Let's not get lost staring at the goodness that is multi-references. Back to the product breadcrumbs. Now that we've defined our collections and their relationships, let's populate the products and CMS collections with items. Next, make sure to connect each product to its type and department. Then connect the types to their department. The departments don't need to be connected to anything because their parent is the storefront or homepage. 
Now designing with dynamic data is a breeze because we've defined the relationship from the bottom to the top at each level. On the product template page, let's create a horizontal flexbox container to hold our breadcrumbs. Now I'll add three text links and a text block separated by arrow icons. Select the first link and connect it to your home page, naming it home or store as appropriate. Select the second link and choose to get text from the reference department name. Then in the link settings, choose the reference for the department page. Repeat the same process to connect the next text link for the type. Optionally connect the final text block to the product name, but it doesn't need a link since we're already on the product page. Now let's take a look at our breadcrumb navigation component. Using the steps above, we can create breadcrumb navigation on the departments and types template pages to complete the trail back to the main store page. The closer you get to the storefront, the fewer links you'll need. You've got lots of design options here. Maybe you want to use buttons or link blocks to create a more visual breadcrumb with interactions. For example, page load trigger to reveal breadcrumbs in a cascade. A hover trigger to highlight the hovered link with a change in color or size. You can apply the same method to create a dynamic sidebar sub-navigation or to create product tags. The design possibilities are not limited by the dynamic data. After carefully setting up our data relationships, we can take full advantage of Webflow to truly design with data in a way that suits our site. This approach works for more than just e-commerce and product collections. You can apply this methodology to blogs or any CMS collection that requires more than just a category or tag for organization. So many more components can be created from these dynamic relationships, like related types of products, dynamic mega menus, color or design defined by product type, and so much more. It's exciting stuff. You can even inspect or clone the Sweet Shop project. Links are in the description. Alas, we've come to the end of this tutorial, and it is how some like their chocolate. Bittersweet. But the power of designing with dynamic data and Webflow is definitely sweet. Like and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like this. All relevant links can be found in the description. Until next time, happy designing.